All right, welcome back. So today I'm going to be kind of showing you around the last probably six weeks of work and to do with like how we've been controlling the vegetation and how the trees are growing. So So what we've been doing is we've been squashing the grass around the trees. So quite a lot of the trees were a lot smaller than we were hoping when we got them, especially the oak. They're only like 20 cent, 10, 20 centimeters high when well, they should have been a lot taller. That's what we ordered, but things don't grow so well. It we didn't grow so well last year and therefore we didn't get trees that were big enough really, which meant come this year, the grass grew a lot quicker than, it sh than uh, the trees. And it basically kind of swamped the trees. And the problem then was the trees weren't getting enough light and the trees obviously need light to be able to grow that well, one obviously but that's how you know that's how the plants grow they need light and water and nutrients so we came in and we did something kind of unusual we kind of squashed the grass around the trees to let the light in and that was so there are kind of other ways you can do it you can use herbicides you can use you can basically strim the grass around but based on the fact is we had here that we were a bit late in kind of starting we decided to squash the grass like by trampling it and it seems to have worked okay in most parts and we can go and check it out today it's been interesting to see how the trees have have kind of grown in different stages so what i mean by that is early on the sycamores look really healthy and because they came out into the leaf first they look really good but then we had quite a dry spell and the sycamore suffered and actually a lot of the sycamores haven't really grown at all i would say this year whereas the other trees which looked kind of didn't look so happy to start with or got swamped with grass the last six weeks they've really kind of shot on so the oaks have grown quite a lot most of them i'd say well it's hard to say but maybe they're like 30 to 40 centimeters high well maybe that's a bit optimistic let's say with a range is probably 20 to 50 centimeters high and most are probably like 30 centimeters high so They've definitely grown since we planted them, which is good. The the other ones that are looking quite healthy are the uh, sorry, the birch. So the birch looked a bit kind of slow. It seemed to be quite high death rate to start with. So we, quite a lot of those potentially have died compared to the other trees. But then the ones that have survived have then actually grown quite well. So yeah, I don't know how the, the, the footage will show here, but behind me there's quite a lot of birch, which I can see popping up. So they're kind of the ones that almost look the best now. And I would say along with the sycamore, the cherry were kind of similar. The cherry looked really good to start with. It was kind of growing, but it's kind of been, that's more mixed. So actually I can see from here, some of it's looking quite good just over there. But where I was down a bit, I was down the hill a bit further and it didn't maybe look so good there. But obviously it's all kind of variable depending on the slope, the type of soils, how the soils retain water during a really dry period we had because like the slightly damper areas, the trees have kind of maybe done slightly better or actually in some of the areas where there's been bracken, we've cut the bracken to let more light in and the trees underneath are doing quite well. So it's uh, quite variable. Whereas like we've had some really dry areas where the grass has kind of died. And as you can maybe imagine, the trees there have generally died. And that's because in those areas, we were kind of worried about it to start with. It's, it's quite um, the rock underneath is quite shallow. So the soils are quite thin. And obviously in that case, they kind of dry out quite quick. Right, so let's go and have a look around. So yeah, I'm down in the quarry field and we've got a, like an oak cluster here. So there's like about 25 trees within about a five meter diameter. So that's quite a high density. That's uh, well, quite high. It's higher than the other trees, but that's because we were obligated to do that under the planning under the grant forms and you can see here so this is where we've it probably doesn't look like it now I stand up again so we've actually squashed the grass around the trees here but it was done say maybe six weeks ago now so you can see the i can probably let's have a look yeah here so if i pull it up you can see that's how high the grass was and then we squash it down and it's down a lot lower. And then this this kind of the green uh, fronds here, that's, that's kind of grown up since we squashed it. So the grass that was squashed has remained down and then it's just started to regrow. 
And if I pull it up like that, you can probably see a bit better. This is, took that there. So the original height of the tree, probably when we was planted, is about here. So that's where kind of it's the um, the the stem looks a bit browner, and then above that, the stems looks greener. So that's this is where it's growing, and this is basically all growing since we squashed the grass down. So before the before we squashed the grass down, you can see at this height, it was pretty much covered and there was, and there's a sort of covered in grass squashed grass and then the lights come in and it's really shot away so yeah in about six weeks it's growing was that maybe 20 centimeters so and it is variable so we can see over there the next one has really hardly grown and actually it's been a bit nibbled maybe that's why so maybe some uh, slugs or caterpillars have gone to that uh, this one is yeah this one's gone a bit crazy it's so what's probably happened here is the leader and that by that we mean like the main um the main stem which would be eventually form the trunk of the tree has died it looks like and because of that the trees then just developed all the other branches which are near the top and they've all started growing so we've ended up it's this is looking something like a bush so this isn't this is not really great for form of a of a developed tree in terms of timber. You want one one stem, one trunk, which hasn't got many branches on. But at this stage, not too worried because we at this stage we just want the trees to survive the first year or couple of years and just to get established. You know, put some roots, uh, really get some energy going, and then we'll come. Probably, maybe even next year, some of them we'll start pruning. So. For example, on this, we would we would maybe next year cut some of the, we'd cut some of these off, and hopefully one of the one of these branches stems here would develop into like the main trunk. And maybe it's a bit simple on this one to show you. So here we've got we've got, really got two we've got two main uh, stems here. So potentially we could cut this one off next year, and then this this one here would develop into the main one and yeah we can see actually they look, all look quite different so this is obviously this is quite light green this is new growth this one hasn't really grown at all this is quite dark but the leaves are kind of different shape and then here we've got one that's actually quite reddish here right let's go and find some other types of trees we'll head over here oh right so between all the docks you can see here hopefully some birch so this is silver birch and we have got the closest one here so this was probably uh, this high when it was planted and then it's really just shot on so all of this what's that maybe 30 40 centimeters has grown and I would say that's pretty much grown since we squashed the grass so yeah the last six weeks so really the birch has really kind of shot on once it's uh once it's been a bit happier and oh here we are a not so happy sycamore so these are the ones I said were doing quite well to start with and you can see here so this is this is how high it was when we planted it and it's grown, what's that, 10, 15 centimetres this year. And I would say that was mainly quite early on in the season. And then since the dry period, it's looked a bit like this. They all generally look a bit like this. Leaves have gone a lot paler. There is a bit of, um, name escapes me, but this kind of blotching on the leaf. So it's not so happy, And but it is alive. So hopefully next year, hopefully next year it will kind of start to grow a bit better. Right, and here we've got, I'm just wondering, yeah, so we've got, let's find a slightly better one. Got a cherry here. So like I was saying, similar to the sycamore, looked a lot healthier when we planted it. And again, you can see, so it's really, that's how high it was when we planted it. So a lot higher than the, uh, than the oaks. It was above the grass, even before we squashed it. And then it's growing by like 10 centimeters this year. So, not as much as we'd hope, but it is alive. And I'm just, oh right, getting a bit distracted by something else down there. So, yeah. And generally, 
in the areas here where you're not, it's, really, it's harder to see something, that's where the oaks are, because they are still a lot smaller in general. And then over here, yeah, this is just going back to the, try not to squash the oak. Got the birch in here, quite a lot of birch, some cherry, and I don't know, hopefully on, maybe if you've got a large green you'll see, but I can just see a lot of trees here, which is good because six weeks ago it was just grass. All you could see was grass, and we were like, oh no, what's, what's happening? Are the trees all dying under there? And you might be able to see there's some canes actually up here. So the canes, that's where I don't know if I'm actually pointing to it on the screen. But there's some canes which are maybe 50 centimetres high. And they're just marking the centre of the oak groups. Let's scan around. I'm going to wander a bit further through here. Because I'm pretty sure... I saw quite... Oh, it's all over there. There's actually a small group of cherry over there, which have really like shot on. So we'll go and have a look at those. Okay, so made it to the cherries here. And it's this one, I guess in particular, although they all look very good. And it's probably, say one and a, one, almost one and a half meters. Oh no, hang on. I just walked up the slope a bit. Let's say 1.3, 1.4 meters high. But the the incredible thing is that it's got three branches. Well, the main stem and then these two. So, and they've all grown a lot. And you think, well, if this, if these two hadn't grown, because most of those cherries look like this, just one single stem. If those two hadn't grown, would it be even higher? Because it's already probably the tallest cherry we've got. So obviously this bit of ground here is the ideal place for growing cherries, maybe. So yeah, these ones are all doing pretty, pretty well. And if we go down the hill a bit, so we've got some sycamore here. And this, these sycamore probably look the most healthy sycamore we've got. And as you can see, they've also grown quite a bit. So this one, this is probably the best, maybe. So this is where it, this is how high it was when we planted it. And it's growing, I don't know, 30 centimetres probably. So I guess there's something to do with this part of the slope. Maybe the soil is better. Maybe it's retaining the water. Uh, it's in the middle. Well, not, there's no other trees nearby, like in terms of being near the current woodland. So like shading. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's done really well. All right. I wanted just to give you more information on the trampling. So we just did the areas where the oak clusters were mainly, and that generally involved doing the trees around just because it was simpler to do that. We unfortunately didn't have time ourselves to do it, so we had to pick other people to come and do it. It took about 25, 30 person days to do the work. So it ended up being pretty expensive, but the priority really is to make sure the trees survive. You know, if we hadn't have done it, who knows what would have happened to the oak. I think a lot maybe potentially would have died, getting eaten, not having enough light, and not growing at all. And that's kind of the issue. We need them to grow, get above the grass for, for next year. So we don't have less, we have less problems next year. So it has been, yeah, like I said, quite expensive. We didn't have to do the other areas so much. So predominantly we have areas of sycamore, quite large areas of sycamore. We didn't have to do it there because they were already above the the, tree, the grass. Same with the conifer areas. We're not so worried. We think the conifers will probably survive anyway. A few, quite a lot of them are above the grass. The grass in the conifer areas also hasn't grown so well. The soils aren't quite so nutrient rich there. So, and also the mounds are bigger in those areas. So that's another problem we had. The mounds, the mounds in especially the broadleaf areas, weren't big enough. So when we, when I say big enough, we got inverted mounds. So that's but they're basically flat but it's the, the width of the mounds. So in the areas where we had bigger mounds, bigger surface areas, the there was less grass. It was already kind of suppressed from last year, so it hasn't grown so vigorously. So that was, you know, that was a mistake. So we definitely something we'd do again. Also getting bigger trees would have helped, but that was kind of outside of our control. We, we kind of, we ordered bigger trees. They didn't come because they didn't grow enough last year or we were later in the queue. We only planted in March. So we were kind of at the end, towards the end of the season, the bigger trees had gone to people who were planting earlier. That's just the way it goes. 
So that's kind of a bit of, bit of a summary. Hopefully that was kind of interesting. Obviously we have some decisions to make this coming winter about how we're going to manage it for next year. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying following along and I'll catch you in the next video.